Hi, I'm Mikey Jeanson, a gameplay programmer with a background in Unreal Engine and C++. I've helped make several games, including Your Average Bear, but now I'm a full-time UEFN developer, and this is Verse Boost. Welcome to the project. Today we are going to be talking about arrays and how to make sure that you're utilizing them the correct way and not using too much memory or slowing your code down too much because you're doing the wrong adding operation or you're doing stuff that's inefficient. So let's jump into it. So today we've got a guard pool device and it's going to grab all the guard spawners subscribe to a couple events and then add it to free spawners and here is the problem with our code. So every time this for loop runs, which is going to be 40 times in this case with all these guard spawners, this is going to get called and it's going to make a whole new array every single time. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Every single time set array plus equals array of the element is called, right? In this case, a guard spawner. It's going to make a new array. So the first one is one element, then it's two, three, etc. So at the end of it, by the time we get, let's say we have eight elements at the end, we're gonna actually generate all these different arrays and they're all gonna be put on memory. And it's gonna be slow to allocate the memory and it's gonna be slow adding them up. When you should just want, you know, you just want one, right? We just want to make it one time and call it good. And we're gonna talk about a way to do that and it's called array comprehension. So here's how we use array comprehension, okay? It's, you could see it's almost exactly the same. We're subscribing to the events, but then at the end where we were setting free spawners down here, now it's just the spawner. And that's because we're setting free spawners up here and we're adding this whole entire block of code. And you might be like, well, what's happening with all of that? Well, it's really simple actually. The last statement in the for loop is like added together all at once and then added to free spawners in the end when it's finished executing. So that just means instead of adding to free spawners each time the loop happens, it's just going to get all these values together and then add them one time to free spawners. So that's exactly what we're seeing here, right? Instead of doing each one, it's just getting all the elements together and adding it once. Before we get into the next topic, I did want to cover how we can use control flow creatively in our array comprehension to do different work depending on different situations. So in this case, I'm just doing something simple with a current index, checking if it's even, and I'm subscribing to the spawned event if it's even, and I'm subscribing to the eliminated event if it's odd. But you can do any work you want, stretch your creativity, do whatever you want, as long as at the end of the control flow, at the end of this if statement, and at the end of this else statement, there is a guard spawner device. You'll see if I add an avoid statement here, the compiler is gonna yell at us and say that this isn't a guard spawner device at the end of the control flow. It's of type void, which means that the compiler is gonna make it of type any. So make sure that when you're using this, you're going to have the correct type at the end of all the control flows. If you want to know the time difference of something like 10,000 elements getting added to an array using this versus array comprehension, you'll see that it's a hundred times faster. So the next thing I want to talk about is making decisions based on your data structure that will greatly impact your performance. And here I've made a fake pool device that simulates getting a thousand elements using get element and then sleeping for a second and then returning all of them back. So in get element, you'll see it's a very common practice. We're getting the last element, slicing it off, and then returning the element. And then in return element, we're just adding it back to the end of the list. So you'll see here that the get calls are taking eight seconds, 8,000 milliseconds. And that is obviously too slow for just a thousand changes on our array. So part of the reason that that last method was so slow is because slice is actually a very slow call. So instead of changed it to use array comprehension here as well and we'll see the difference that that makes. So you'll see here right away we're already getting five second difference using array comprehension instead of using the slice method from the verse digest. So I highly suggest that you do not use the slice method. It is way too slow. Right here, slice. Don't do it. 
So obviously three seconds to change a thousand elements is still too long. It should not take that long to change just a thousand elements, right? For getting and returning. So let's look at these methods and how they change how we are using the array and how they manipulate it to make it act as if it was doing the same thing, but instead we're not allocating new arrays. You'll see in get element, all we're doing is changing this free index. And this free index is represented as the last element in the array. Okay, so that's what the free index is. To further illustrate the point, let's say we have a three character array. We got X, Y, and Z. Free index will be set at the last index when everything's populated. Okay, now let's say we get three get calls. So they take the Y, or they take the Z, then they take the Y, and then they take the X. Well, then our array is empty, right? Well, if you go look, we actually don't change any of the elements in the array, we just change free index. So X, Y, and Z are still there. But free index will point to negative one. It will be out of bounds, right? And there will be like a wall here. So when they get returned, free index will get incremented. Let's say Z gets returned first. Okay, now it's Z. And then technically, it's Y and Z. But you have to realize that everything on the right side of this wall, everything right of free index, doesn't actually matter. Because when people call get element, it won't go to the right of free index. It will take what is at free index if it's in bounds, and then it will move it down to the left. So everything to the right of free index actually doesn't matter. And our program will act like it's not even there. So then let's say that X gets returned next, and then Y does. Well then our free index would move from here to here to here, and it'll be at the end. And then the next time it gets called, we'll return the Y. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys, and it's a quick trick to use free elements array, and we're never overriding it. So let's show you how much faster that makes this code. So you can see right away just how much of a difference this made. We went from 8,000 milliseconds to 3,000 to 1 millisecond. So because we decided, you know what? We're not going to make a new array every time get or return is called. We're going to use free index and slide it left and right depending on whether get or return is called. Because we decided to do that, we shaved seconds off our time and now look how fast our program is running. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this stuff will help you in your UEFN projects and help you become a better verse programmer using arrays. The next video should come next week. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace.